Hi, today I'm going to discuss a very misunderstood problem in investing, and that is dividend investing. So a dividend is when a company pays the shareholders some money because the company is making a profit. The company directors decide how big this dividend should be, and some companies might pay out a big dividend and some companies pay out no dividend at all. See, there are many people who get excited about dividends because it's a way to make money. If the company you invest in keeps paying a dividend, then every three months you get some cash in your account. Wouldn't it be cool if you built a portfolio that pays you, say, $1,000 or more a month in dividends? You are making money and you didn't have to work for it. It sounds really great, doesn't it? Well, unfortunately, that's not really how it works. And I'm going to argue today that making an investing decision because of the dividend is a bad idea. Now, if you're new to my channel, well, welcome. My videos are about investments that anyone in the world can make. And I'm trying to help as many people as possible understand what they're actually investing in. See, most people spend more time researching their next phone or computer than they do their next investment. I have built a reasonable sized portfolio that I'm aiming to continue growing at about 20% per year. That's the goal. Now, I've based a lot of my knowledge on the great investors of the world, the Peter Lynch's, Warren Buffett's, Charlie Munger, Monish Pabrai, and a handful of others as well. Now, I'm not perfect at this. Not every investment that I'm gonna make is gonna be a home run, but we will definitely find some great investments and we'll push for that 20%. Now, back to talking about dividends. A lot of people like to invest in companies that pay a nice big dividend and choose only companies for their big dividend. This is called income investing. Now, people like my grandmother do this as it helps provide extra income so she doesn't have to work and can live a normal lifestyle. But a lot of younger people do this as well hoping that they can make enough, enough dividend income to replace their jobs. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain that income investing doesn't work. Chasing dividends is actually a bad idea. See, dividend investing isn't smart at all and will leave you missing out on big money. There shouldn't be an argument here unless you disagree with mathematics. I know many shareholders love dividends because it feels like they're getting free money and it feels good to have that cash appear in their investing accounts. It feels like they're getting a paycheck for doing nothing. But let me say this as clear as possible, dividends are not free money. Okay, so let me explain with an example why dividend investing is actually a bad strategy. Well, except for my super old grandma. So let me paint you this scenario. So here are two companies. We've got company A and company B. Company A pays a dividend, whereas company B does not. Okay, so company A's share price is $100 and you have one share. Company's B share price is also $100 and you have one share of that as well. Now, both these companies made $20 of profit. Company A gives $10 to you as the shareholder as a dividend and keeps $10 to reinvest back into the company. So $10 for you and $10 the company keeps. Total $20, but remember you pocketed $10. Then company B keeps all $20 and reinvests it back into the company. Now, since both companies made a profit, they now have a little more value because that profit goes into the company's bank account and therefore the company is now a little bigger, of course. And because both companies are now a little bit bigger, well, they're gonna be worth a little bit more. The shares of company A are now worth $110 per share because they kept $10 and gave you $10. The $10 that they gave you has left the company, it's gone. They cannot use this anymore. Therefore, the company is $10 poorer now. And company B's share price is now $120 per share because they kept all the $20 profit. No money left the company and that is why the share price reflects the value that they still have. So in your portfolio, you have company A, which equals $110 plus cash of $10. So that's that $10 dividend from company A and then company B is now $120. Okay, that seems pretty logical so far. That's all very fair and it's the same result, right? So what you could also do is sell $10 of company B shares. Then you would have $110 of company B stock and $10 of cash. It's exactly the same as the dividend of company A. So when the company pays a dividend or if it doesn't pay a dividend, in that first year, it doesn't really matter because you could just sell some shares and get the same result but it does matter a lot, and it is a big, big long-term problem. Now, this is the start of the video where I explain why dividend investing is actually bad news. When you take a dividend from a company, you are essentially giving up some potential compounding effect. Compounding is the process when the profits are reinvested to generate even more profit over time. 
For example, this is compounding. Okay, if you double one dollar, you get two dollars. You double two dollars, you get four. Four dollars, eight, eight, sixteen, sixteen, thirty-two over five years. Now, it doesn't obviously go up the same amount each year. The amount the investment grows is increasing each year. Year one, it only went up by a dollar, but by year five, it is going up by sixteen dollars in the year. Compounding is a very important concept to understand, so please read up on this idea. Okay, so there are two ways you can make money from investing. The first is, well, the share prices go up, and this is called capital growth. The second option is you get dividends, and that's the company giving you cash. So back to company A and company B. In our example, both companies made that $20 in earnings, and they are expected to grow these earnings at 20% per year. Okay, now let's look just at company B for the moment, and let's just say you bought 10 shares. So in year one, you'd have $1,000 and it grew 20% to 1,200. Year two, well, it'd be $1,200, turns into $1,440. Year three, $1,440, turns into $1,728. And so on for 20 years. And this is what it looks like compounding after 20 years. Your shares will be worth $38,337 from that initial $1,000 investment into company B. So what is happening here is you get the 20% growth of the company compounding year after year and you get 0% of it in dividends. Now let's turn over to company A. Now company A pays a dividend, remember, they pay half of the profit as a dividend. So year one, you have the same $1,000. It grows 20% the same as company B and you have $1,200 at the end, but you've taken $100 cash. So the shares value is worth $1,100 and you have $100 in cash in the bank. Now this happens again in year two. So now in year two, your starting balance is actually $1,100. That's gone up 20% to 1320, but you're keeping $110 in cash. So the value is now $1,210 and you kept $110 as cash. In year three, you've got $1,210. It goes up 20% to 1452. You kept $121 in cash this time. So the value of the shares is now 1331 and you're keeping $121 and so on for 20 years. Now, after just three years, we can already see a big difference developing because 20% compounds far better than 10% plus a dividend, even though after the first year, it was the same. So even though after one year, you would think the dividend that you receive makes up for the difference, well, it doesn't once you go past that first year. Now let's fast forward 20 years into the future. Company B is now worth $38,337. Company A is now worth only $6,727, but you've pulled out another $6,400 in cash accumulated over the 20 years. So that equals $13,127. That is an amazing difference between company A's results and company B's results. For company B investors, if you wanted $6,400 in cash, well, you could sell $6,400 of your shares after 20 years and pocket that as cash which would be the exact same as 20 years of dividends that company A received, but you would still have nearly $32,000 of stock value. The difference is the compounding effect for company B is better over the longer term because they didn't have to pay a dividend. So the moral of the story so far is just let it compound. Don't take the company with the dividend because it has a dividend. The company that reinvests its money rather than paying a dividend will make you far, far, far richer if you just let it compound at a high rate. So company B is growing their money at 20% per year. They are doing a great job and that is a far better investment than giving me the profits and getting me to try to work out what to invest to beat that 20%. This 20% number is called the ROIC or Return on Invested Capital. Sometimes it's called return on capital employed or return on capital, it's all the same thing. The higher and more consistent this ROIC number is, the better the business is at investing its money to make more money. It is a sign of a great business and is definitely the type of business we want to invest in. There is no way I would want this company to pay a dividend if they are making 20% of the profits. The business will grow and grow and grow and will give me such amazing returns compared to giving me a dividend like company A. Now, it's actually pretty hard to get 20% return compounded annually. So company B, please have the profit, invest it back into your great company for me. Here are some examples of companies that I have investigated recently with great current return on invested capital and their return on invested capital averages over the past five years as well. 
So you have electronic arts at 22% currently and their five-year average is 28%. Facebook's ROIC percentage at the moment is 40% and their five-year average is 31%. That's really high. Skyworks is 28% currently and their five-year average is 32%. Alphabet or Google is 24% currently and their average is 25%. Biogen right now is 17%. It averages 26% and Nvidia right now is 30% and their five-year average is a gigantic 60%. Now there are cases when the ROIC number is consistently low, maybe only 4%. And in some cases it jumps around from positive to negative. Well, in this situation, for example, my oil tanker investments, I would actually prefer the dividend as I can invest the money at a better rate than 4%. So even though I've been saying that I hate dividends, well, there are times when I'm actually happy with the dividend, but that's only because the company isn't doing a good job in, at investing the money themselves. These investments are generally cyclical companies like the oil tankers. All my other investments, I don't want the dividends and, and I want the company to invest the money at a high rate for me and let it just compound inside the company. Now with the oil tankers, there are other reasons why I invested in them. And if you are interested, please check out my two part oil tanker thesis for a more thorough explanation. But even in this situation, when I do get a dividend, I would actually prefer the company to buy back their own shares far more than give me a dividend. Let me explain. When a company uses this money to buy back its own shares, well, as an owner, I will have a larger percentage of the company. But just like paying me a dividend, the company still spent the money out of its bank account. Therefore, the value of the business has gone down. So it is pretty much the same result as a dividend, but there is one major difference, and that is the tax problem with dividends. Now this is where it can really hurt getting a dividend. When a company pays a dividend, well, that is considered income and you have to pay tax on your income in most countries. So dividends are the same as getting a salary and you have to pay tax on your salary every year. In our example from earlier, well, company A paid you $100 a dividend. Well, that unfortunately is really only gonna be about $70 and the other $30, well, it goes to the government when you pay income tax. So. $30 actually disappeared into the government's hand and they will, be keep, they will keep taking 30% of those dividends every year. Now with company B, on the other hand, who reinvested the entire $200 back into the company, well, we didn't pay tax on that $200. So company A is even further behind after tax. Now if company A decided to buy back their own shares instead of paying out that $100 cash as a dividend, well, at least the government wouldn't get that $30. So share buybacks are better than dividends as well. So dividends suck for these reasons. If the company has a good ROIC, taking a dividend hurts your long-term compounding dramatically. If the company has a bad ROIC, well, a dividend is still bad because the government takes their share in tax. What we should always prefer is the company to not pay a dividend, not do share buybacks, but have great ROIC, that return on invested capital. Sometimes companies pay a little dividend or do a little buying back of shares. This is often just to keep shareholders happy. Or in some cases, the company doesn't know what to invest their money in and they think their company is undervalued, so they buy back their own shares as an investment. There is only one situation when dividends are okay, and that is when the company has a bad return on invested capital. But there really needs to be an exceptional reason why we are investing in a company with a bad ROIC. So dividends are the worst. I'm not gonna disregard companies with dividends because they are at least trying to do what shareholders want, but as smart shareholders, we want high ROIC and no dividend. Dividends should be the absolute last option. Look, thank you for staying all the way to the end of this video. I know it was quite a long explanation, but I think it was really important. And I'm really interested to hear everyone's opinions. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos and I will see you next time.